Is that going to be good? I don't know. Let's try that. We've got some space going on. Yeah, okay. Gonna try something different in this series. This is gonna be making a coffee while talking, and it's gonna be difficult to do the camera. So we're gonna sort out like the coffee here, but then we're also using the espresso machine, which is over there. So I'm gonna have to do like a cut in between. But let me just uh, get the machine on. We are going to use uh, one of these espresso cups, and I think today I'm going to. Uh, I'm not in shock, really, am I? Today, let's go back a bit. Uh, like today, I'm going to uh, probably do like a macchito, we call it a small latte. So, we need this, but I need to clean this desk first. This um, top, what do you call it? What do you call it? There's no counter over. <laughs> The old good sort of wet towels. Make sure your counter is always clean. And the problem with uh, coffee is the coffee grounds just take her everywhere. Two things I hate coffee grounds and cabbage because it just blows up everywhere and it makes a mess. The worst thing. So, first I'm going to get my coffee out. Now for espresso, because you, because you need to use fine grain, it's hard to do that with the grind I've got. So I've just brought one that's pre-ground, it's the Italian style, the Illy, the Illy one. But this is my own container I have. We got the Illy, you can't see it in there, but the Illy coffee grains in here. I'm using that today. These are about month old, so it's going to taste not great, <laughs> but I need to use it up. I don't use the espresso machine as much as drip coffee, so just going to check the machine. And the machine is ready, so let's switch cameras. First thing you want to do is uh, drain the water out and warm your cup up. It's gonna be dirty, I know it is. Oh. Let's do that. Man, that needs swiping, you can tell with that. back so now I need to clean this pretty bad so I just do a quick rinse of tiny rinse of water I want to keep this warm from the hot water oh man this camera's terrible I want to keep this warm so I shouldn't have used that I should use a paper towel because all the coffee grains go on the towel <laughs> that was a bad mistake oh, I'll just use this for now but just to get all the coffee out Okay. Nice. I think this 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 episode is just going to be me explain how I make coffee. But the next episode, I'll talk about something different while making the coffee. This is just more how I do it. And then next time, I don't have to keep repeating this coffee making process. We just make coffee and talk. 
But this today's episode is going to be episode zero, making the espresso as a beginner. Um, right, I need my scales. Get your scales out. And this is where I'm going to change camera. Right, so this is where I'm going to put the coffee in. What we want to do here, which still isn't great, it still makes a mess, but it's better than not doing it. I made, I got a plastic cup, cut around it and made this custom like pot thing to put the coffee in. But it doesn't completely work, but it works better than not having it. So now we just need to add the coffee. So if we add the coffee. We, oh, um, put the scale, put, good to have the scale on, put your scale on first. You want to go for about 12 grams, I'd say. Depending on your machine, my machine, 12 grams is the best. That's about 7 grams there. Oh, oh, 11. That's 12 there. I'll make, I'll make a mess everywhere. There we go. I started getting into coffee like properly uh, last year. My wife started showing me how to do drip coffee, and then we started looking into espresso. We wanted to make latte because I got myself a USB thermometer, which I'll be using on this episode. And it's all from there. We just chest milk. This is just, I would rather have real, get decent coffee beans and grind it myself, but grinding it to espresso fineness is really hard. Unless you have a decent grinder, which costs like a ton of money. So we are just going to be using pre ground Italian, Illy. There's another brand as well, I can't remember the name of it. It's got, I think it begins with V. I'm no good this part. Spread it, I'm really bad at this. Any pro any professional is going to laugh at me, but I'm just going to gently do that. And then what we're going to do, make sure not to get this portal wet, because otherwise it'll just ruin the coffee. So what we're going to do, they need this more. Um, surprisingly, I haven't made much mess yet. <laughs> Next thing now is the tamper. This should push down on the coffee grains to kind of equalize it. There we go. And then it all falls and makes a crap. Put it one more time. The problem is, I'm using a plastic tamper, and the plastic tamper is terrible. I'll show you why it's terrible. I need a proper one, but they're hard to find, and you've got to find. The right tamper for the right machine. See, it's not. This tamper's terrible. Is it, I'll show you why it's terrible. It's because there's like a seam right in the middle, so it makes a little. It bumps out a little bit, so it affects it. So when you bring it out, so this coffee falls off. So this is garbage. But I can't find a tamper of decent quality, which is for this espresso um, porter. Unless you measure it and deal custom and it costs like loads of money. So I just gotta deal with it. Right, so now that's uh not bad, not bad. That's ready now for an espresso machine. What I normally do is I'll put that in the espresso machine, but don't extract it until I've got my milk ready. But I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna keep it out because I put it in the espresso machine, it's still kind of wet, so it might dampen it, it might put moisture in it, it might affect the flavour, which I might be why it doesn't taste as great as normal. So I'm going to leave this out like this for now. And we're going to just wipe this table. And then I'm going to get the foam milk ready. My method of making foam milk is fine, but the foam quality is fine, but the problem is it doesn't, it's not as hot. I'll explain why in a minute. So, 
when I'm using when I'm making a latte with espresso, I never can get it nice and piping hot. It's always like luke not lukewarm, but it's kind of warm coffee and it's annoying. And I'll explain why I have that issue and I can't really do much about that unless I get a milk foam or a proper one. Right, next thing is the milk. Let's just pause it. But time to do the milk. Uh, it depends. You work. I like full fat milk. I think it's better. I'm using this brand, which is from the drugstore. I don't normally get this one. I normally get sucru, 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 I can't say it now. My sucru, yeah, sucru no Unu, which is the local milk around here. But I didn't get it. I'm going to quickly wash this. I can't, my own Japanese is weird now. That's a hard word to pronounce, but it's the island I'm on, but I'm not using that milk. We'd use, where, where was this from? Where's this milk come from? Does it say? Osaka. Okay, this is Osaka. <laughs> It's 100% milk. And then we want to put it in the glass. If you want a pitcher, you need a glass pitcher so you can get the milk, get the foam right. When you pour it, you want to pour it right. I normally do that here. That. It's not going to be a big glass, though. it's going to be a small one. I'm probably going to use the same cup. Now, sometimes I will. The cup I'm warming up at the moment with the water, I normally, it's tiny, it's an espresso cup, but I normally will just drink a small milk foam with that, but this might be too much milk, so I might have to do something else, but we'll find out. I'm just going to put this in the microwave for about 40 seconds. I'll put it for 50 seconds, and what I do is I wait for it to start bubbling, and when it bubbles, let's see if I can get on camera. Can you see it? Not really, you can't really see it, but like... If I put my hand like that, you can sort of see it. We'll make sure it doesn't bubble up. If it starts bubbling, then we stop. Otherwise, it just affects the uh, skin. You get all this like milk skin everywhere, and it, and it explodes. 50 seconds normally is it? 100 watt, 50 seconds is normally what I do. You can't really see, but this is like the best camera angle here. Doesn't seem to be boiling still. Still got 10 seconds. It's starting to go. Is it starting to go? I don't know. Let's see. One second. Oh, yeah, it's starting to move. That's good. I'm going to say a bit more. The reason I would like normally you would probably want that, but because of my method of foaming, it gets cold so quick. So it's not going to be a warm, it's going to be a hot coffee because it's just hard to do. Right, it's going to just deal with it. Right. Because right now, this is nice and hot. But it won't last long. Because what I'm going to do now is froth it up by using my USB foamer. The problem with this is that this is cold. So I put this in, and it makes the milk cold. <laughs> I could warm it up in hot water, but that means I've got to have separate warm water. What I could do, actually, I might put this in my... Cup which is warming up with the hot water I used earlier. Let's do that, that might help a little bit. Yeah, that helps a little bit, actually. Okay, so the your espresso cup which has water in, which is warming it up, you can dip this in, it might make it a bit better. Still not great. Anyway, just dip it in the middle, start spinning. Just do the lowest setting. I'm going to do an angle, a slight angle in the center. No, don't go right down into the milk, just a bit little, just a bit halfway, maybe a bit less than that. And eventually you want to move to the edge of the cup. That's it. And then just leave it. Until it until you can't hear the sound anymore. You hear the tone of the uh, sound. Go 
deeper and then it suddenly goes quiet and that's when it's foamed. There we go, there we go. It's changing. Maybe you can hear it on the camera, I'm not sure. If you go right down to the bottom, it's just gonna, the whole milk is just going to be foam and you don't have any milk left and it won't be great. I'm getting there. There we go. It's gone quiet. Stop. Do one whisk so I don't get milk everywhere. Now the most important thing here is the banging. And then swelling. This is really important. This just regulates the whole milk. This makes the foam more fine. If you don't do that, it's gonna be thick foam and it just won't be as good. But I see this seems to make it much more fine because you're mixing it, you're really mixing it in. There you go. It's much better. Now the thing is now I'm gonna pour my espresso and this is gonna be warm by the time I put it in. There's nothing I can do about that because I haven't got a method. I have got my espresso machine. It does have a foam on it. But I can't be fussed with all the cleaning afterwards. So this is the way I'm going to do it. So we're going to now change camera. This is the best angle I can get. But right, first of all, we've got the water, the awful looking water, which is warming up the cup. I have cleaned up here now, so it shouldn't be so bad. There we go. Now all you need to do is put your cup. Wait, now all you need to do is put your porter in first. Got to use the porter first. Put the porter in. I'm gonna have to move the camera when I pour the espresso because it's gonna vibrate and make the camera go crazy. So we're gonna have to get a few things ready. Oh. I turned the bloody espresso machine off. So now I've got to wait for it to get ready. You want your coffee towel ready to? Catch any coffee. And we just gotta wait for it to heat up and then we're gonna put this into here. Make sure it's secure properly, it doesn't fall, yep. And then we're gonna put right like this just moves the camera. Here we go. I'm gonna put this on. Well I put twelve grams in, so I'm gonna I want double, I want double to come out. So we want around 24. Normally I, I don't mind a bit more, like 26, I don't mind. So what I'm gonna do is now we're gonna pour it and around the 20 gram mark, I'm gonna stop the machine, so pull. And the camera's going crazy, stop doing that. Here we go. Around 20, I'm gonna say even 20, I'm gonna stop it. It's gonna go over 24. Quite by a lot actually. I should have stopped about 18. Yeah, it would have been a much better cappuccino uh, espresso if I did it earlier. You want to aim for 24, so that's a bit going to be a bit weak. But oh well. And what I need to do here is pause. <laughs> right, I've got the poured it out. All I did earlier was just put the towel under the dripper so it's not dripping on the machine and dripping on the towel. That's all I've done. This is your milk. So get a spoon. And then we just pour. Basically, milk. I don't think I've got. I think this cup's too small for this amount of milk. And then a bit of foam. This foam is a bit too thick. I think you do want not full fat milk because if you do full fat milk, this happens. You get so much foam and it's not ideal. I'm just gonna do that though. Not bad. So all this foam now, extra foam that you don't really need. I'm just gonna eat it. So I think that's why you want not a full fat. I need to experiment with different milks and different processes. Because I haven't mastered the milk foaming properly yet. Right. I think that's what we're going to do for today. But I think 
my next episode, which will be episode one, this is episode zero because this is making a coffee. The next episode will be I've already made a coffee and we're going to talk. And the next step, next topic is probably going to be uh, weight wise. I think I'm going to talk about my now diet and how I've been with my weight all my life and now finally gaining weight. That'll be next time. Let's test this out. Oh, that's good. That's surprisingly good when my coffee is like a month old. <laughs> so, well, that's good though. All right, and I'll see you next episode.